The 11th century Roman treatise on combat with arms is a sight to behold and due to networking I've managed to establish a find on something unprecedented. It was through a contact who has been doing archival work at the library of great Meteoron. They have been proud to have forwarded me a treatise of the Eastern Roman Empire and with some translation work an effort has been made to both translate and contextualize the treatise in a readable form. I hope to share this with you today. Little is known about the treatise from the introduction. What we do know is the author is named Alexios. However, whether this is related to the emperor of the same name or is simply a military man of the same name is another matter entirely. It may also be the case that the treatise was anonymously written but then attributed to Emperor Alexios, something which bears similarity to Ibn Akhi Hizam's lineage of Furusia treatises. The treatise is very much to the point, covering a number of plays with the sword and shield, spear and shield, and archery, both mounted and dismounted. There is a brief section on hippology and some underlining comments on siege work, though this is very brief. Interestingly, there is also a section on mace work, however, like Nezui Matraki's Ottoman treatise in the 16th century, this is also very brief. The specific dating can't be determined, however it's evident that the treatise should be understood within the context of the First Crusade, as we have little indication it was written before the Romans lost a large amount of land post manzikert The bluntness of the wording indicates that this was made to train soldiers as simply and as quickly as possible, no doubt reflecting the desperate times the Roman Empire found itself in when it came to training men and acquiring manpower. Without further ado, here is the translation. The king of the Romans, Alexios, bears a great service to Roman land. In the time of Diogenes the Romanos, he impressed the emperor's friends by his great occasion, although he was only 14 years old. Ever vigilant, he served on campaigns under Diogenes, who was leading an expedition against the Persians, an important task and this ambition of the young Alexius threatened the barbarians. He made it clear that one day he would come to grips with them, and when that happened, his sword would have its feel of blood. Despite this, it was his mother who kept him out of fear. Though later, he served his father's brother, who had been put in command of all soldiers in both East and West. It is to this king that this treatise is dedicated, who, through devotion to sheer hard work and constant vigilance, he was another Aemilius, the famous Roman, or a Scipio, or a second Carthaginian Hannibal. Introduction It is both best and necessary to pick out foot soldiers from Romans and Armenians, heavy infantry, large in stature, and no more than 40 years of age, but then train them properly to use their shields, to be warlike and fit for all occasions, to manoeuvre with their spears, to wield their swords, to defend themselves capably, and to fight against their infantry with the same skills as theirs. For it is memorised in our ancestor Romans that these were capable men, and with this such skill is all but forgotten. Such instructions are simple, with application the men shall learn in due course with little hesitation. These instructions are in various plays and should teach the necessary skills that were evident in the time of Hadrian. To manoeuvre, one must first assume a position, place one shield in front of them and the sword above like... <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god. Ugh. <sighs>